Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today in learning how to do a slant asymptote of this rational function of 4x squared minus 10 divided by 2x minus 4. So um, whenever you have a rational function, which just means you have a polynomial in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator, which means you just have like some function of x in the numerator, some function of x in the denominator, anytime the power of x in the numerator is greater than the power of x in the denominator, you're always going to have a slant asymptote. All right. And the way we're going to find that slant asymptote is by doing long division. I know, I know. Long division. We got to do long division here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our long division. Let's set it up. Bam. So basically the numerator goes on the inside of this long division and the denominator goes on the outside. Now what you're going to do is you're going to look at the highest power and its coefficient of x in that numerator, okay, which is known as the uh, dividend now. And you're going to divide it by the highest power of x in your denominator, or which is known as the divisor now, all right, 2x. And you're just going to perform this. So 2 goes into 4 2 times, x goes into x squared x times. So this is what is the quotient of that division. Now that goes on the top here, 2x, okay? After you plug that in, then what you're going to do is you're going to set up your little subtraction thingamajig. So we're going to take this term now of 2x and multiply it by each of the terms there of your original uh, denominator. So we're going to take the 2x times 2x, and that's going to be equal to 4x squared. And if you did this correctly, it should match exactly that. Then you're going to take the 2x and multiply it by the negative 4, which will come out to be negative 8x. Now there's no guarantee that this will exactly match, okay? That part. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this negative sign, you're going to distribute it to each of those terms inside of your parentheses. So the 4x squared becomes negative, and the 8x becomes positive, all right? Now what you're going to do is you're just going to perform the operations uh, that are indicated. Right, so you can combine these like terms, and when you combine them, they just go bye-bye. Now, you cannot combine these two terms, although I wrote them basically one underneath one another. Um, you know, this is really the 10 x the 10 doesn't have a variable associated with it. So this is kind of like saying in here that you had a plus 0x, right? Now, you don't really have to write it that way. You could just recognize that these don't combine, and therefore what you're left with is you're left with 8x minus 10. Cool. Now what you're going to do is you're going to repeat the process, all right? This is like your, and you're going to repeat the process as long as there is an equal power of x here as there is here. In other words, this is to the first and that's to the first, so you're going to continue this process. All right, if there was no x here, you'd be done. Now uh, we take the highest power of x with its coefficient, so the 8x there, and divide it by the highest power of x with its coefficient there, and this just becomes a 4, positive 4. So you're going to add that then, that's part of the quotient. You're going to add it to the 2x from before, you're going to set up your subtraction thingamajiggy, and you're going to take the 4x, uh, what? 4. You're going to take the 4 and multiply it by the 2x and the negative 4, okay? So when you take the 4, multiply it by that 2x, that's going to be an 8x, and if you, and if you did it correctly, that should match. And then you take the 4, multiply it by the negative 4, and that's going to be a negative 12, uh, 12, 16? Ah, I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. Man, this espresso is fantastic today. Oh my God. My brain is like on fire. You ever have coffee like that? Or espresso like that? Whew. That was my best attempt at whistling, by the way. So uh, so anyway, okay, back to business. So distribute the negative sign to each of those two terms now. So the 8x is going to become negative, 16x is going to become positive, and you're going to combine the like terms. So these just cancel, they go bye-bye, we'll see you later. And then the positive 16 minus 10 is going to be a positive 6. Now to finish out technically the, uh, you don't even need this part at the at the end. Basically, once you get to this point, you're, you can finish, but... Um, this is known as your remainder. Notice you don't have an x term here, so that's when you're done. And then you're going to have, you put your remainder here, and you're going to divide it by the uh, denominator, basically, or the divisor there, 2x uh, minus 4. Now, it turns out that I don't really care about the remainder when I'm trying to find my slant asymptote. All I care about is the meat of that function, okay? That's a slant asymptote. <laughs> that's all there is to it. You're just going to get rid of that, uh, just disregard the... Um, just regard that uh, uh, remainder, all right? Now, if you want to see this in action, take out your calculator, graph this original function, uh, open parentheses, do 4x squared, minus 10, close parentheses, divide it by then, open them. So there's going to be 2x minus 4. Close them. And now hit graph. There's the function, right? And you can kind of almost see that slant asymptote over here, right? You can kind of see it. Now, the function here, we can plot this thing over here, the 2x uh, plus 4. All right, so let's go to y equals. Let's go down. We're going to do 2x plus 4, and let's see what happens. Graph. <gasps> Look at that. Right? There it is. And as you can see, I'll blow it up a little bit. There we go. And 
as you can see that that slant asymptote, that linear line, definitely approximates that, you know, end behavior of the function there. All right. And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you can help us out by maybe liking the video or subscribing, that would mean the world to us. All right. And um, we really, truly want to help you through your class. So check us out because we have tons of resources on our channel. We have thousands of solved problems. We're going to be leaving all types of goodies for you in the descriptions below over time. So please remember to check that out. And um, the best way to you know, do well. If you really want to do well in these classes, these science classes, math classes, science, um, is by doing a ton of practice, practice problems. Don't spend too much time. I mean, you got to read your notes, but you got to do practice, right? That'd be like, you know, studying music theory and never playing the piano or something like that. Like what, you know, thanks for tuning in. See you later.